In chapters one and two, we discussed the ideas of what is business data analytics and a piece of that, which was data mining. Now we'll move into actual statistics. Using visualization or descriptive statistics through scatter plots involves plotting one quantitative variable against another. We'll create a scatter plot, usually as our first step to regression analysis. The direction of the patterns indicates whether there's a positive, negative, or no relationship between the variables. Analyzing scatter plots involves looking at the points to see if they fall in a somewhat straight line. Are there any outliers, values pulled far away from the other variables? Is there a curve in the data? This would lead us to another type of analysis. And how spread out are the points? If they're very far apart, you'll probably have no slope, which means no relationship. In your first example, Blue Buffalo Dog Food wants to put on the package how much food to feed a dog based on its weight. Note there's a definite positive slope to the line. The relationship is that as the weight of the dog increases, the amount of food increases. There also appears to be a severe outlier. It turns out there was a 190 pound St. Bernard in the data, while most of the other dogs weighed between four pounds up to 100 pounds. When we identify the variables, X is the independent variable, also called the predictor. Y is the dependent variable value that we want to predict. Our correlation coefficients describe whether there is a relationship at all and the nature of the relationship. The nature is simply positive or negative based on the sign of the correlation coefficient. The degree or magnitude of the relationship is based on its size. The closer it is to the absolute value of one, the stronger. Therefore, there's a strong positive relationship between weight of the dogs and the cups of food to feed them. These are the rules of correlation. R is the symbol for a correlation coefficient. It can range between negative one and positive one. A correlation coefficient of zero indicates absolutely no relationship between X and Y. A value of negative one or positive one would indicate a perfect linear relationship. The sign, again, just implies the direction the slope is taking. In the next example, we'll look at carbon emission data based on the miles per gallon different models of cars get. The EPA would like to show what type of relationship is seen here. When we look at the graph or the scatter plot, we see there's a negative slope. So as the miles per gallon increase for the cars, the carbon emissions decrease. We also notice in the plot that there's probably a severe outlier. Maybe that was a, a Toyota Prius that got 55 miles per gallon. Then when we look at the correlation matrix, the value of negative 0.9233 would indicate there is a strong negative relationship between miles per gallon and carbon emissions. The rule of thumb for what makes a strong, moderate, or weak relationship goes as follows. Correlation values between the absolute value of 1 and 0.7 will be considered strong. R values between 0.69 and 0.45 will be called moderate in strength. 
Correlation coefficients from 0.44 to 0 would be considered weak in nature. Suppose you wish to predict sales for a new cola based on the ratings it received in taste trials. The higher the rating, the better the taste. What if the correlation coefficient is negative 0.68? How would you interpret this? So there's a moderate negative relationship between sales and taste trials. Therefore, the cola recipe probably needs some tweaking before we let it enter the market. That'll conclude the information on scatter plots and correlation analysis. The next PowerPoint will enter into regression analysis.